Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Everyone that is joining us today and uh, at your homes and uh, in uh, our service today. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, to worship the Lord in his great name and to lift his name high. Amen. We're going to pray as we begin our service this morning to lift God up. And if we begin just lifting up our hands all over the building and all over our homes right now and begin to invite God's presence into the sanctuary and to where we're at. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your greatness. God, we thank you for your great name. God, we thank you for the greatness that you've given us, God. God, we thank you for just being right here with us as we begin to welcome your spirit, God, into our sanctuary, into our homes today. God, we love you and we thank you for your great name. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. His name is wonderful. Amen. I'm going to start with a scripture to this more, uh, as we begin the rest of our service. It says, in, in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse number 15, it says, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with the knowledge and understanding. Amen. It's good to have pastors that lead us and guide us with understanding and knowledge and wisdom. And uh, it's just good to have that leadership and uh, to talk to us about that great name. Amen. It's my great honor today. I want uh, to do this first and foremost, and I know it kind of throws things uh, differently, but I, I wanted to, uh, to, today we're celebrating a special day, and uh, today is Brother Pastor Miller's birthday, and it's good to be, uh, to be able to celebrate that today. Uh, so I'm going to ask Pastor to come up here. Surprise, surprise. And uh, we uh, have a special gift for you today. Uh, Pastor uh, Miller, as you make your way up here, uh, the, the uh, EBAC family is upset that they couldn't physically be with you today to celebrate your birthday. But it looks like they're already here because uh, we have their pictures everywhere. Uh, and uh, they, they're upset they can't physically be here. But we have enjoyed your leadership thus far and looking forward to many more years. And we pray that the Lord will bless you. Uh, this uh, for your birthday and many more years to come. So uh, we want to present this to you uh, as, a ch as the church body of those trustees right, well, and the Lord, Apostolic you there, Church uh, and the thank Saints. And thank you for all the there, things Mr. you've done. Dan, that looks like Brother Miller. I believe it is Brother Miller. My goodness, look at there. You know what, Sister Deb? I heard a rumor that it was somebody's birthday. And I believe it's Brother Miller. So... Praise the Lord. Happy birthday, birthday. Brother we Miller. Love we love you, brother. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Pastor, Pastor Miller. Miller. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. We love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. We love you. We love you. And Jeremy does too. And Dad does too. Pastor Miller, just want to wish you a happy birthday, brother. Have a good one. Happy birthday, Brother Miller. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh, I thought he came in. Bye, y'all. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller from the Handies. Happy birthday, Brother Miller. We love you. We love you. Bye-bye. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Brother, Brother Miller. Miller. Happy birthday to Pastor Miller. Eat all the cake you want. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Brother Miller. You're doing a great job. Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. Hope you have a blessed day. Have a good one. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. Happy birthday. God bless you. <laughs> These times, you have been a strength to all of us. We're so blessed to have you. We are truly blessed. We love you. Take care. Bye. 
Happy, Happy birthday to Pastor Miller from the Simpson Kitties. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller! Woo! Happy birthday, Brother Miller. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brother Miller. divided, I wish there was something we could agree on. I think like Pastor Miller looks great in his orange and white face mask. Happy birthday, but that's embarrassing. <laughs> Happy, birthday, Happy birthday, birthday, Brother Miller. Miller. We love you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Brother, Brother Miller. Miller. Catching up on the 50s group. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Brother, Brother Miller. Miller. We miss you. God Many more you. to come. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Miller. May the Lord bless you and guide you as you lead us for many years. We love you. Happy yeah. birthday to the best daddy ever. Happy birthday to the biggest daddy and perfect daddy ever. We love you, Dada. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Brother, Brother Miller. Miller. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Pastor Miller. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor, Pastor Miller. Miller. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay, bye. Well, that's one way to open a service. <laughs> and I say a, a very hearty thank you to, to all of you. Uh, thank you for my card. Thank you for the video. Uh, they I, now now I see where they got all the pictures from. There's pictures, screenshots of all of your videos, uh, taped all the the pews here this this afternoon, and uh, I say thank you very much. Um, I, I am I am honored and privileged to pastor what I I continue to say and always say to be one of the to be the greatest church and uh, with some of the greatest people in the whole world. And I love each and every one of you, and I thank you very, very much for, for your gift. None of this was necessary, I promise, but I thank you just the same. And uh, now we're going to open with worship once again. So to, to, to refocus us, <laughs> why don't we stand and lift our hands, and let's ask God once again to his presence to enter this place. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you once again, God, to come into your house. Lord, we worship and praise you, God. God, I thank you for all that you've done, for all of your blessings, Lord. And we gather today to worship your mighty name, Lord, to give you praise on high. We worship and praise you, and we love you, Jesus, as we worship you this morning.
Hallelujah, God. We love you this afternoon, God. We worship you, God, and we are believing for greater things. God, in a world of negativity, in a world, Lord, where there seems like there's no hope, God, we are believing in greater things. We are hoping for greater things, and we are trusting you for greater things. Amen. We praise you today, Lord. Right now, we're going to take our needs to the Lord. Each of us have, have needs that we can take, and, and if you all want us to continue, remember, one is Brother Mike Van. Uh, he is in his rehab, a rehab facility, continuing to improve. And please, so please keep him in your prayers. Continue to keep Sister Mel in your prayers. Mel Trentinella, she had a fall this week, and, and I, I filled you in about that on Wednesday. Um, she is doing well. I visited her at her house this, this week, and she is, she is doing well and continuing to do better day by day. But please continue to keep her in your prayers. And as always, let's continue to keep all of our leaders, our governors, our president, uh, all of our city and council, every and mayor of every city uh, in our prayers in the coming weeks as things begin to open up. Because once again, there, there are already people beginning to, to attack uh, different leaders based on decisions that they are making. And, and truth of the matter, we don't know what's right or wrong as far as what's, what's going to be the best, best case scenario because we don't know what the future holds. But we know the one who does. And so that's why we want to take our prayers to him, take our prayers to the Lord and ask for wisdom, for guidance, uh, for direction so that we know what the future holds and so that we know that, uh, that we can trust in him through all things, believing in greater things. So right now as those needs are scrolling across the bottom of your screen, I want you to start lifting these names up. One last one, I want us to remember Sister Elaine Kelsey. Uh, her, her younger brother has, has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, Jimmy, I believe, is his name, and I want us to lift him up in prayers as well. But let's take these needs to the Lord right now. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your spirit, for your anointing. God, for your presence that is so evident in this house right now, Lord. God, I pray that you would send ministering angels out to your people, Lord, to be in every house, Lord, of every, of every member right now. Every member of your body, Lord, as we lift our needs to you, God. Lord, I pray that you would continue to touch Brother Van. God, as he's in that rehab facility, I pray, Lord, that he would heal and, and rehabilitate quickly, Lord. I pray that you would be there with him, Lord, that you would send angels to be in the room with him. God, we thank you for protecting Sister Mel, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, for, for, for doing so much in her life in such a short period of time. God, I pray that you would continue to touch, continue to heal, continue to restore in that situation, God. Lord, I pray for our governor. I pray for our president. I pray for the mayor of Clinton, Lord. God, I pray for each of our county officials, for the health department, Lord, for our police officers, God. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would be with them, Lord. I pray for every leader, every pastor of every church, God. Lord, in the days to come, I pray that you would give wisdom. I pray that you would give direction, Lord. God, I pray that as we seek you, God, that we would find you, Lord. God, as we seek wisdom, Lord, that you would give us wisdom, God, to know what you would have us do, Lord. It's not about us, God. It's not about our will. It's not about our opinion, God, but it's about you. It's about knowing your will and knowing your timing, Lord. And I pray that you would help us, Lord. I pray for every need on our board this, this afternoon, God, every name that is scrolling across the bottom of your screen right now. God, I pray that you would touch those. Lord, you know every need. You know every situation. And God, we pray that you would act. We pray, God, that you would intervene, that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would restore, Lord. God, we ask for your will to be done, and we trust you. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray all these things. Amen. I'm trusting that he is going to take care of our needs, that he is going to take care of every situation, of every prayer request. There are many, many things to be in prayer for. But we serve a prayer answering God, and I trust him wholeheartedly. I trust him with everything that's within me. And I know he hears every prayer that we pray. Amen, amen. So good to have all of you with us, uh, joining us this afternoon. So thankful for, once again, for, for all that, that you've done, I guess, for me this week with the birthday. Thank you for making videos and taking time out of your day. Um, you'll never know how much I appreciate that. I very much do, and it's it's good being able to see pictures of, of all of you uh, here in the in the sanctuary with us today. It's during our prayer, we were praying, and and I told them I was going to have to to call Nick and Ann and tell them they can't have their dog in the sanctuary because they're I see it and they have their dog with them. But now, of course, I know it's because of the video, and uh, and shame on all of you for having all those cats. <laughs> My goodness, 
the Simpson family. I, I hope that's all the cats you have. <laughs> but, uh, but I thank you just the same and love each and every one of you and Sister Summer with your cat, all these cat lovers. But it's all right. I love you. I love you just the same. But uh, once again, we have a good time around here. And so I thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for, for all of your kindness uh, towards me and towards my family. And I thank you for allowing me to, to lead. I thank you for, for being willing to, to follow, even though, especially with all of this, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to navigate my way through it as well. Uh, Brother Massingill was asking me this morning, he said, well, since we had to postpone the, the installation service, he said, are you, you having second thoughts about all this now? <laughs> I said, well, it, it was voted on. I guess it's about as official as it's going to be, so I don't think I'm going anywhere just yet. And anytime I think about it, Pastor Triplett quickly reminds me that you're the pastor now. <laughs> so, <laughs> But uh, I, I love uh, Pastor and Sister Triplett very much and, and so thankful for them, and I give them honor uh, in all of this. few announcements to make. Uh, our service times once again for for this coming week Wednesday at 7 p.m. We'll be here online uh, has has been our custom the last few weeks and and we will continue to do the same thing next Sunday at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. But here's what I want you to, to be praying about and this is this is what I, my this is my goal. Um, I'm not going to say this is set in stone as as we are continuing to get new recommendations and policies seemingly daily and they're going to be releasing more. Uh, stuff I think is more specific to churches and for gatherings in, the, in this, this coming week. But I would love to be able to open the doors and be able to have everyone back in here on Mother's Day, which is May 10th. That's two weeks from now. Um, I realize some, that that may seem early for some, and for some it may seem not early enough. Uh, once again, there, I, we, we don't know uh, what all the future holds in the next few weeks, but we'll be able to, to watch and monitor so I'm not saying it is set in stone, but we are going to do everything we can to have the doors open back here in two weeks on Mother's Day. And uh, my hopes are that, that we, can, we can gather together. We will probably have one service, just gather here for one service on Mother's Day. And I hope we can make that happen. Uh, in the meantime, we do want to take as many precautions as we can. And so we may be contacting some of you to, to, to help with different cleaning cleaning tasks and stuff that we can where we can keep stuff sanitized and clean even throughout uh, the service and throughout the day, not just before and after service. We want to do everything that we can to, to take every precaution to make sure that we can keep you safe. Uh, because once again, we want to we, we value your safety. That's the whole reason we're in the situation we're in right now. It's not for, for fear of a government, but it's for, for, for making sure that you are safe. There's nothing more important than, than keep the safety of, of our people when they come in inside these four walls, and we want to make sure that we keep you safe. Yet at the same time, I'm ready to see you. I'm tired of, of, of seeing rubber chickens, and also I'm glad we got pictures of you, but I'm ready to see your faces walk through those doors again. Uh, I do ask, once again, I covet your prayers as we navigate this. I also ask that if if we rec you know ask ask some things that may be a little out of the ordinary in the in the our first two or three times coming back that you'd be willing to cooperate as we're trying to to navigate uh, all the all the requ I wouldn't say requirements but all of the uh, suggestions of our government and I am for making sure that we can do the best that we can to keep everyone safe so we ask for your cooperation through all of that but once again I, my, my hope and my prayer is that in two weeks we can gather here once again and uh, be able to see all of your faces here. And we will keep you updated on that also with the times and when we would be having service. But we have a couple weeks to get all that figured out. But we will certainly keep you updated. Also, once again, as I've said the last couple weeks, I hope you're allowing your children to watch our Sunday school lessons. Uh, Sister Val and Sister Triplett, uh, they do a phenomenal job. Sister Nicole has been doing a tremendous job with the Littles and other of our Sunday school teachers that have been posting videos, uh, Sister Stukesbury sending out cards to her kids. I, I, I thank all of our Sunday school teachers um, for all that they have done and for taking time out each week to make sure that even though we're not gathering together, they're still getting their lessons out. And I thank them very much for doing that. Amen. We're going to take up our, our tithes and offering this afternoon. Um, once again, you can give them a, a multitude of ways. One, you can give through PayPal by sending your money to Eagle Bend Apostolic Church at gmail.com. 
Uh, you can also mail those to P.O. Box 489, Clinton, Tennessee, 37717. Or you can do as, as many do and some have already done uh, earlier this morning, but just stop by here and drop your tithes and offer it off here at the church. And you can even do that throughout the week. Um, but I, I thank all of you for your faithfulness to the Lord, and I know God will bless you uh, for your faithfulness because we serve a faithful God. And if we do our part, he is bound by his word to do his part. And God loves a cheerful giver, but he also loves to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on those that are willing to, to, to do their part, for those that are willing to give, for those that are willing to go above and beyond. And so right now, we're going to pray our prayer, and I want you to lift your hand right now in your home, and I want you to pray this prayer with us. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given back to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received my whole family saved and walking with God perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out all that I do will prosper in Jesus name amen right now in your home can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise God, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, God, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness, Lord. We give you praise today and thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in our service the remainder of this day. Worship with us as we sing at this time.
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children say may his presence may his presence go before you and behind Afternoon. Can we lift our hands one more time? God, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit, for your presence, God, that is in this place right now. God, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Jesus. God, we worship you, and I thank you, mighty God, for your anointing, for your power, Lord. God, we thank you that you go before us for all generations, for all generations, Lord, for this promise is unto us. Lord, and to all that are for all, to all generations, God, we thank you, Lord, for your promises, for your goodness, and for your favor, mighty God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Once again, we thank you for joining us today. We're so glad and delighted to have you with us. Amen. If you, if you do not attend here and you're watching, we thank you for joining us, and we are delighted to have you as our guest and joining us this afternoon. We welcome you to Eagle Bend Apostolic Church, and we hope that in the next couple weeks that we may be able to see you here uh, inside these four walls with some of the greatest people you'll ever meet in your life. Amen. It get, but, but more important than the people is the, is the presence of God that we get to experience every time we come into his house. And I'm so thankful that, that we are able to be here today. I'm thankful that you are able to join us. And I know God is going to, to bless us tremendously and that God is going to do mighty works today in his house. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles this afternoon, we'd like to begin turning to the book of Luke chapter 18. I'll begin reading it with verse 18. I'll give you a few minutes to, to turn there and I hope that you would be that you would follow along with us. If you don't have your Bible, they will have it on the screen for you. You can follow along 
in our opening text, Luke 18, verse 18. Amen, amen. Luke 18, begin, beginning in verse 18, says, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. For he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Brother Riggs, his disciples had been following Jesus, standing there. Looked at him and said, "Well, then, then who 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 can be saved? If it's it, you know, if it's going to be this this hard to get into heaven, if it's going to be this this strict, and then then who 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 can who can make it? How are we going to even make it to heaven?" And he said, "These things which are impossible with men are possible." With God. This afternoon, for just a little bit, I want to talk about detrimental degrees. Detrimental degrees. Right now, if you could lift your hands, let's ask God to prepare our hearts this afternoon. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your spirit that we have already felt so evident in this place. Lord, I pray that your that same spirit, God, would be in the home of everyone that is watching right now by way of the web. Lord, I pray, God, that we can continue to bask in your presence, Lord. God, I pray that as your word goes forth, God, that we would take it, that we would apply it to our lives, that we would live this truth, Lord. God, it's all about you. Lord, the whole reason we're here is for you today, Lord. We're worshiping and lifting your name on high. Help us to receive your word, Lord, to apply it to our lives, live this truth every day of our lives, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor and the precious name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. You may be seated this afternoon. You know, since since all of since everything has started with the, the COVID nineteen and and all of the, the quarantines and stay at home orders and everything, uh, we've been told to stay at home as much as possible. And so I, I've I've taken the the opportunity to, to do some some construction on my house. And uh, my, my parents are in town right now. They came in for my birthday this weekend and also with Archer's birthday being a couple weeks ago to kind of celebrate both. And, um, and my dad showed me this, this meme. and It was a, the difference between a woman's idea of quarantine and a man's idea of quarantine. And it showed, uh, first it, for, for, the, for the man, it showed a man and woman just sitting on a couch relaxing. His wife snuggled up with them. And they're just, just sitting there just relaxing. And then it shows a woman's idea of quarantine. And it's a picture of Chip and Joanna Gaines. And Chip has a hard hat on and Joanna Gaines has her orders. And she's just giving him a list of everything he's going to do and how she wants it done. And uh, that's, that's been pretty much my quarantine. <laughs> and uh, I think it's been the same for, for others, other men that I've talked to. You know, they've been getting their, their honey to-do list that have been sitting on the, on the back burner for, for, for years. And, and Sister Tab's playing her little violin back there for me. So I, I appreciate the sympathy. Um, amen. But, you know, with, with all of this going on, and, and, and so the last, last few weeks I've been doing a little work here and there on my house. And... Um, one of the things that, that stuck out to me is, is how much time 
especially with, with building anything, if you're doing an addition or building a house or whatever you're doing, one of the most important parts is making sure that the house is square. That the, before you dig one ditch, you got to go and you lay it out and make sure you get everything squared. Once you dig a ditch, then you go make sure you dig your, your footers, you go and you make sure it's square. Once you pour your footers, you make sure it's square. Once you pit block, you make sure it's square. Once you bring wood out, you make sure it's square. You build one wall, and you make sure it's square. Then another wall, and you make sure it's square. And you stand them all up, and you make sure when you put them all together, they're square. <laughs> you know, over and over and over, you continue day in and day out, continuing to check, continuing to measure, continuing to make sure that everything is square, that everything still lines up with the original plan that you started with. Because you can take a plan, Brother Riggs, and along the way, you know, you can, you can. well, I, I, this doesn't matter. I'll just, I'll cut a corner here, do this here. You know, if this doesn't line up just right, it's no big deal. But the problem is, is when you take the next step, well, then the next part of it's not going to be squared either. And before you know it, you start going through it, and, and it's just, it doesn't seem like a big deal at first because it's just, it's just, just one little degree. You know, what, 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 a, being off one degree does, doesn't seem like a big deal. Let's not make a big deal about being out. Just, just say one degree. But, you know, c consider this. If, you, if you're off, if you're off your course by one degree, by one degree, if you were to travel, say, just a foot, if you look at it, look at it, you know, lay out a measuring tape, measure out 12 inches, and you're off by one degree, that's only 0.2 of an inch. You're talking less than a quarter of an inch. That doesn't seem like a big deal. If I'm measuring 12 inches, if it's off just a hair, just a quarter of an inch off, it's not a big deal. No biggie, right? But the further you continue to go out, even if it's just one degree off, after 100 yards, you'd be 5.2 feet off your mark. Well, 100 yards, that's, that's, a, that's a long ways. And five feet, that doesn't seem like a, that doesn't seem like a big deal. I mean, that you could walk 100 yards one degree off and probably still reach over and touch what you were aiming at. You could still, you could still get there and still almost reach because it's, it's, just, it's just a little bit. But after you go a mile, you would be off 92.2 feet from your mark. One degree. We're talking just one degree, Brother Riggs. We're not talking, you know, seven or eight degrees where, you know, we're, we're, we're way off here. We missed it completely. No, no, no. We're just, we, when we started out, we started just, just one degree off of our mark. If you were to travel from San Francisco to LA and miss your mark by one degree, you would be six miles off your mark. You would completely miss it. And in fact, if you were to say, go from San Francisco to Washington, D.C., you would end up 42.6 miles away from where you was headed because you were one degree off. It's not a big deal. It's no biggie. <laughs> If you were to, to get in your car today, and, and, and or you'd probably need a plane or a, a blimp or something, but if you were going to travel all the way around the world from right now and go in a straight line, but start one degree off from where you would need to be, by the time you got back around, you'd miss Clinton, t Clinton Tennessee by 435 miles, which means you'd probably end up in Georgia, which may not be a bad thing, but I'm just kidding. They, they, my, I need to, I meant to file a report with Brother Massengill. My office was vandalized last night, and uh, they, they hung stuff all over my office and pictures, and, and they even put, Brother Reed, can you believe they put caution tape over my Georgia diploma on my wall? I, I couldn't believe it either. I couldn't believe it. But, uh, so get me, Brother Massengill, I'm going to file that, that report. <laughs> they, they, they missed the mark, and <laughs> they, they were, they were one degree off on that. But if you were in a rocket, and let's say you were headed to the moon, you know, you, you hear about with NASA, and there's so much that goes into it, so much thought and planning and, and years of preparation. But if that rocket were to take off one degree off course, it would miss the moon by 4,169 miles, which is twice the diameter of the moon. And like I said, you can go on and on. The further out you go, you see it. If you were to, to, to fire something at the sun and you miss it by one degree, by the time it got to the sun, you would have missed it by 1.6 million miles because you were one degree off. And the last one I'll give you, which is, blew my mind, is if you were to travel to the nearest star, if you were to, to, to set 
your destination as the nearest star that you could reach, and you set off on your course one degree off. By the time you would get to where you were supposed to be, you would be 441 billion miles off target. See, over time, that one degree error doesn't seem like a big deal at first. But the further you go and the further you continue being off your mark, the further you get off course. And it doesn't take much. One degree, you know how small that is? When you think about it and put it down, that, that's it's so minor. You know, if you're cutting trim, and you, 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 a lot of times you can just get it close and you put a little caulk on it because one, one degree doesn't matter. When you're talking about small measurements, one degree doesn't matter. But over time, that one mere degree error in any course of travel makes a huge difference. It doesn't take much to get there. Like I said, it can be something very minor to bump you off course. I read last week Hebrews 12 and 1 saying, Wherefore, seeing that we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run, the, run with patience the race that is set before us. We are all in a race headed to a destination. All of us are on a journey. Every single one of us today are headed somewhere. Every single moment we're moving closer towards our final destination wherever that ends up but so we must realize that you say well it's not a big deal or I have time we have to realize that every day we're moving closer to something every day we're drawing closer to our final destination every day we're getting a little bit closer but that deter that, that will be determined by how how close we are to hitting our mark you know, with like I said, with with my my this addition I've been doing on my house, it seems like day in and day out, multiple times a day, we're continuing to check square, making sure that we're still square, making sure that are, are, are we still good, are we good here, are we good here, you know. But but we can't because we, there's no room for error. We 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 when when it comes to our salvation, we can't we can't we can't be off. Because we're all in this race headed to a destination. Now, I would hope it's the same destination. I hope we're all trying to get to heaven. Um, but we are, we are building up treasures in heaven, in that heavenly home. We are all on a mission to take as many people as we can with us. I want to witness to our city. I want to take it. My mission is to take as many people with me on this journey as I can. We are all on a mission to take as many people as we can. And, and it's a course, once again, in which there is no room for error. We can't even be off one degree trying to make it to heaven. He said, one thing thou lackest, Brother Riggs. He didn't say that here's a plethora of things. Here, and you're way off course. He said, there's just one thing. You've done so good. You've covered all your bases. But when you started out, there was one thing that kind of bumped you off course. There's one thing thou lackest. Matthew 7 and 13 Jesus said, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. If few will find that gate, it's because that many miss it by just some degree. Many, many journeyed towards it. Many plan to make it to that gate. Now, the way to destruction, broad is the gate. Brother Riggs, you could, probably, you could probably head out five or six degree off course and still find the gate to destruction because broad, that gate's wide. You can miss your mark and you can hit it no matter which way you aim. But for us to hit the gate, that is called straight. Narrow is the way. Straight is the gate. And few there be that find it. Solomon said that it's the little foxes that spool the vine. It's the little things. It's the little degree. It's the little thing that we that with our journey through life that seem to deter us, that seem to bump us off course. It's often those little things that, that throw us off track. It's, it's not much. It doesn't seem like a big deal. Yet we find ourselves a little off course on the onset. And then as we go through life, sometimes we end up miles off course. I'm sure there's been times in each and every one of our lives where we've looked around and said, how, how did I end up here? You know, when I thought of what I wanted to do or what I wanted to be, and now I look around and think, I, I never saw this coming. I didn't see this in my future. This wasn't what I planned. 
And so often we can go back and figure out what it was that, did, that, threw our, that changed our course, that changed where we were headed. Because there are many degrees of which can be detrimental to our race. Like I said, we all run a race. We're all in this together. But there are many things that can be what I call detrimental degrees. One of those can be anger. Uncontrolled anger can, can send you and your family and everyone in contact with you spinning out of control. You know, Jesus, God robed in flesh in a moment when he had the opportunity, when he had the opportunity to, to be mad at everyone, to lash out, to get even, to do anything he wanted, to fight for his life. He could have done it. When Peter drew his sword and he cut the ear off a soldier, even at that point, Jesus could have been mad because he was just betrayed. He could have been mad because he was being arrested. Yet in the midst of all of that, he reached down and picked up that ear and put it back on him. He said, this is, I'm not going to allow, you know, and, and, and rebuke Peter. Said, I'm not going to allow anger to deter my destination. Jesus said, I, 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 there, there, there is a plan, there is a track, and I'm not going to allow this one moment to change everything. Because I am on a mission. He chose meekness. He chose meekness over anger. I, I heard this, this week someone said that, you know, so, some view meekness as weakness. But I heard meekness is actually just controlled or harnessed power. Being able to, to control oneself. That, that's a great strength, Brother Riggs. For someone that, that can control themselves, control their emotions, control, you know, being able to control your tongue. That, that, and that, that is a great feat. And now today, we, not only your tongue, but control your, your fingers. That, that may be the hardest thing. You know, we, you read scripture and tongue is unruly. Who can, who can know it? You know, who can control it? And, uh, but when it comes to our fingers, sometimes there's more damage done with these than even our tongues. Yeah, I'm going to get off of that. But <laughs> because there's some things we'll type that we ain't willing to say in person, Brother Ricks. We can type it all day long and nobody can see us there sitting there with our, anyways. I'm gonna <laughs> but don't allow your anger or lack of self-control to throw you off course. Don't allow, you know, what somebody lashes out on Facebook or someone lashes out at you. Don't allow that to throw you off course. And at the same time, don't allow your uncontrolled anger or your uncontrolled thought process, or your uncontrolled abilities to, to derail you or throw you off course, even, even if it seems minor. You know, there, there's, there's nothing wrong to go and say, I'm sorry. You know, if, if something happens in a situation out of anger, it's better to go and just, you know what, let's just go and make, let's make this right. Let's be the, be the bigger man. Let's correct this and let's get back on our mission. Let's get back on our journey Versus saying, well, forget them and try to go off on our own path and do something down, go in a different way. Because once again, that throws us off our path, even if it's just slightly. You know, someone with an aggressive behavior, you know, our grace, aggressive behaviors can throw you off course. Kind of goes, goes hand in hand with that. But whether that's verbal, physical, or, or passive or blatant, a aggressive behaviors of any sort will throw you and those around you off your course. Um, I've come in contact with people in my life that were that were just aggressive people, across the board. You know, they 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 like to debate, they like to argue, always looking for a good fight. Didn't matter what it was about. They they were willing to debate on anything, even if they didn't agree with it. They debate, you know, for it if you were against it. it doesn't matter. Just that aggressive personality. They have no problem putting putting people in their place. You know, quick and and, and cutting and condescending with words. And 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 you look at that, and I look at those people, and I say, well, I never saw where they exhibited Christ to me you know but for them it was that one degree error that threw off their whole walk with God because it was you know something that happened and and and, and they're just their their personality and their behavior is, is a better word you know it controlled and influenced and affected every relationship they had in a negative way you know one of the biggest things I feel like that has thrown many people one degree off has been Simply misunderstandings and imaginations. My goodness. How, how, can I get an amen there? <laughs> how many times have you seen people and, you, and they try to figure out, you, know, you look at their life or look at a situation and see how they just got completely derailed. And it's like, what? what, what <laughs> pardon me, the old song. What were they thinking? You know, it's <laughs> what, 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 what in the world is going on? And, and you talk to them and you realize They've got this whole imagination 
of something they they've comprised. Uh, there, there's 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 many books that even talk about that. You know the difference between living in in reality and in fantasy. So often, you know, we can we, if we allow our minds to run unchecked. That's why Paul said we have to take every thought into captivity. You can't let your mind just run unchecked because it it, it will run down paths of which it has no paths no no business running down, and your mind can begin to create stories. Anyone know what I'm talking about? You, you've been there. You, you've done that before. And all of a sudden, you know, something happened. Let's say a situation happens. And it could have been a complete misunderstanding. Somebody forgot to show up here. They forgot. And all of a sudden, your mind begins to run. And you can, con- you can concoct an entire story of something that you can convince yourself is, a, is fact. And you convince yourself that this is what happened. And then and you'd be mad and, and, and harbor a grudge. And, and it, change your whole, it could change your whole life. Only to realize years down the road, that was nowhere close to what happened. <laughs> you know, wh- where, where, did this, where did this come from? But, you know, because here, here's the thing. The truth is we're all unique individuals with unique backgrounds, and we have different ways of thinking. I don't, I don't think like you think, Brother Riggs. I don't think like my wife thinks. I don't, I, there, I don't know if I think like anybody else in here. Yet if we allow our opinions to be the driving force behind why we love each other if if our opinions is is our you know if that's the driving force behind whether we love someone or whether we approve of them or, or not then that's that can throw a lot of people off course because it, it's easy to get worked up about some way that you disagree with some how somebody handles something or how somebody carries themselves or how someone runs runs their family or how someone does their job or or how someone posts on, on Facebook. But once again, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what your opinion is or whether you agree or whether you don't agree. That can't be the driving of a force behind why you love someone or approve of them or have a friendship with them. But there is one thing that I think we can all agree on, and that is our need for Jesus. If there's one thing we can agree on, it is our need for him. You know, and we all have, we all have a testimony. Each and every one of us, we have a testimony of what God has done in our life, of how God changed our life, of how God set us free. And that is what unites us. That is what unites our cause and our mission. But if we let just one degree of difference of our opinion throw us off, it'll be to the detriment of the entire mission, our entire mission. Because everyone that is involved is affected. You know, unhealthy relationships can throw people off. Unhealthy relationships can throw people off. You know, th- those relationships that don't speak to your purpose as a born-again, sanctified individual will throw you off course if you're not careful. And more specifically, the relationship that, that, that doesn't speak to God's divine purpose for your life well, you know, we, we'll, we'll, will pull you off your mission. It will pull you off by just, just a degree. We have to be careful how you allow people to influence your life and your walk with God. You have to, that's why, once again, it's, it's, you can't just take, always just say, well, this person said this, so now, now this is my course for the rest of life. No, it's, it's every day checking and rechecking and making sure that, that our lives are still on track, making sure that, that we, we've, still, we've still plumbed everything up, everything is still in line. You know, procrastination and laziness can throw someone off just by a degree. Putting those things off that we're not, we're not doing them at all, can cause great damage to your future because it takes work to complete your mission, to, to, to build, you know, to, to get to where God wants you to be and, and, and to, to do everything in his timing and in his will. So don't let that one degree throw you off course. You know, many of us find ourselves sometimes in, in error with doctrinal issues. I, I've seen people that, you know, they get hung up over, over you know, these minor hangups over what's necessary or unnecessary or whether it's heaven or hell or not. And, and this gets us, you know, kind of st- stuck, if you will. We, f- we feel like we can't move forward, we can't go backwards. And I've seen people get tossed around with, with all the winds of doctrine, seeking so many, you know, kinds of opinions on the matter. And, and all the while, you know, they, they're searching out this one thing that, that may not be a heaven or hell issue. But they spend their life focused on this one thing. And this is, this is that one thing that just deters them or, or, gets, or gets them off track. You know, with the, go, we can go back to the rich young ruler. He obeyed all the commandments. That, he didn't have an issue with the commandments. But there was just something personally 
that he struggled with. Jesus said, there's just one thing. He said, well, well I've done everything by the book. But personally, we, there are things that we can struggle with. There are things that, that can become a sin to us, things that can become an issue to us, something that can happen to throw us off you know, our, our course. And if we stay so hung up with little things, then we never get to, to realize or get to the bigger questions of, God, what do you want me to do with my life? God, what, what is your plan for me? What, what is your focus for me? What specifically do you want me to do? And we could float along the winds of uncertainty. One of the biggest things as well for our generation is we like to avoid the inconvenient or, or discomfort. Now that's, 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 our gener- that's my generation. If it's inconvenient, if it's going to be hard, if it's going to be you know, a discomfort to us, it's easier just to, to kind of bypass that. But here's the thing. Most of the time, when, God, when, we, when God's called to, to greater draws us out of the realm of leisure and convenience and it calls us into faith it causes us it calls us into difficulty and challenge and sacrifice those are the things that oftentimes draw us and bring us to where God is wanting us to be and it's oftentimes it sends us to the to the brink of our ability and our capabilities and, and at times even beyond that sometimes God takes us beyond what we feel like we could even handle and if we're not careful, our love for ease and abundance will rob us of God's greater purpose for our lives. We'll miss the mark by a degree of difficulty because we, we weren't willing to do what seemed hard. Because we, we, we chose leisure or comfort or convenient over difficult. And this is why self-evaluation is so important in each and every one of our lives. This is why in the building process, Brother Riggs, we're constantly checking and rechecking and checking and rechecking. And every element, every, every layer upon layer upon layer, we're checking and rechecking and making sure you know, that every measurement is, is correct because we can't, we can't afford to be one degree off. We can't, ha- we can't afford to have this error in our measurement or it throws off the entire project. It'll throw off everything. So constantly we need to evaluate our words we need to evaluate how, how we said things. You know, when, 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 when you know, our, our thinking or even evaluating our thinking behind what we said. You ever said something before and you get in a car and you're like, why did I say that? And you start evaluating yourself. You know, what, what was it that motivated me to say that? You know, there was some, something there that motivated that. That didn't just come out of nowhere. <laughs> out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But it's that evaluating, you know, evaluating our thinking behind what we said, our approach to, to a situation, you know, overall. I don't know how many times I've sat and just, you know, pondered a situation or, or, or a conversation or a meeting and just think, how could that have gone differently? <laughs> you know, what, what could I have done differently there? What, what, what did I what, evaluate what I said and what they said and just kind of just replay it over and over and over? You know, did we say what we said out of love and a genuine concern uh, for another individual, or were we just judging an imaginary group of people? Were we passing judgment over it and calling it righteous judgment and, and, and doing whatever we want to do and judging people as though we have the right to do so? But we need to, to consider that there is an internal soul behind every person that comes in contact with you. That behind every Facebook post, there's an eternal soul behind that. There's a soul behind that putting those posts at. Whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you like them, whether you don't, there's still a soul there. There's still a person there that needs God. So, so, no, so behind every, 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 every contact, no matter if it's Facebook or somebody you pass in Walmart, we, we need to, a moment by moment, we need to be checking ourselves to make sure that our influence on everyone around us and everyone we come in contact with Le- is 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 a influence that leads them to a deeper walk with God, that it influences them, you know, to further and deepen their relationship with God, because the Bible says that it's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. It's the goodness of God. So daily we need to reflect. We need to daily reflect on our actions. Did we demonstrate forgiveness? Are we caught up in a petty argument? Did, did, did people see Christ in me today? I, I've, I've said it many times in the last few weeks. Who's the light of the world? You are. I am. 
We are the light of the world. So day by day, did people see the light in me? <laughs> did, did, did I walk into a world filled with darkness and shine the light of Christ and be that light? Or did I hide it under a bushel today? Did I cover up that light and just try to blend in and just go under the radar? Monthly, we need to check ourselves monthly to make sure that, you know, that our finances are staying true with budget so that we can be free to support the life that God has called us to live. Yearly, we need to be reflecting on our actions. You know, did, did we take steps this year? Did we, did we, you know, reach the goals that we set? Are we still in line uh, to do what God has called us to do? Or did we just merely uh, maintain or seek another route? Did we allow comfort and convenience to make our decisions? Or were we led by faith and obedience? Because if we don't take time to reevaluate our lives, and if we don't take time take the time that God has given us, especially right now, the time that we have right now to reflect, we can easily be thrown off by just a couple degrees. You know, we may be going through life right now and feel like, we, you know, we've been doing our checkbox and everything's good. But when, the, when, when that rich young ruler came to Jesus, he said, all right, let's, let's reevaluate here. Let's figure out what's going on. And Jesus said, yep, yeah, everything's good except this one thing. If you, if you could get that out of the way, you're good to go. Because, I mean, Jesus told him to make it, the key to it, he would make it to eternal life if he did one thing. That's how close he missed it. That's how close he came to only have one thing that kept him from heaven. It would be better right now to slow down and to take the time to remeasure and to check and to double check and make sure once again that, that our life is, is plumb. You know, when, when you call... That the term used often when you're trying to make sure something is square, or you're trying to make sure a board is square, is called truing, making sure a board is true. You can true it up. You can true it, make sure that if the board is true, then that means it's square, it's plumb, everything is good. And we can true up our lives with the truth. We can true up our lives with his word. You see, for us to be able to, to check and double check you know, measurements, we have to have a standard. If, if, I, if I just happened to, to make my own measuring tape and you made your own and we just made it out of thin air and we showed up and we both tried to check square, you check one way, and that's, guess what? It ain't going to work because we have two different standards we're trying to use to square what we're working on. So when we square our lives, we have to have one standard, one standard measurement of which we, we look and compare and look at. So when we take the word of God and we begin to, to lay our life out and we take that out and we open and say, all right, God, let me make sure I'm going to check this angle and I'm going to make sure this. And, and, and it can't just be something you do once a year or you'll find yourself way off. But it's, it's, it's a day by day, multiple times a day. That's why Paul said, you know, you know pr praying without ceasing. There has, there has to be a constant checking and rechecking of our lives, making sure that we're keeping everything square that everything is still in order, that everything is still right, that our foundation is still the way that it needs to be. Because if we don't slow down and check and recheck, we may have to start over or worse, we may miss our mark altogether. We may miss that gate, the gate called straight. We have the greatest mission of all time. We, we have the distinct honor of helping to save a lost and dying world of being the witness, being the light to the world, one person at a time, one experience at a time. And this mission is worth our very best effort. But do you know, if, if, do you know it, take, it takes all of us? Right now we're, we're, we're separated. Uh, I see all these pictures, and I think you know, every one of these pictures represents one home. And right now we're, 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 we're scattered, we're dispersed, and we're separated physically. But every single one of us plays a crucial role in winning our city, in winning our families, in winning our nation and our world. And the devil would love nothing more than to convince you that your role doesn't matter. Right now, while you may be home and you may seemingly be disconnected from the church, Satan may be whispering in your ear saying that you don't matter or that your role doesn't matter or that they haven't asked you to be there or participate or help because you don't matter. And nothing is further from the truth because you are important. 
each and every one of us play an essential role in the church. Every single one of us have an essential role in making the mission happen. You know, if you ever, you ever, nothing could be further from the truth than to think that you don't matter or that the church doesn't need you. If you ever pass, you know, some of these massive houses or massive, you know, f- facilities and you look at and you think, man, you know what? One person didn't just build that. One person didn't show up and, and, and build that or, or build this facility or this house. But, no, it took, it took an effort from plumbers and electricians and contractors and masons, engineers, designers, all the way through. You know, you got designers coming in, heat and air, all these different people, all these different groups that work together to accomplish a common goal. But there took hours and, and days and months of planning and configuring and reconfiguring to make sure that this was going to happen. But each job and each person was necessary and important to build to build this house. And I realize right now we're talking about the body of Christ, but each and every one of us play an essential part in the body of Christ. And when one suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoice, we all rejoice because we all play a part. We all have a part in the body uh, of Christ. You know, on, on any mission that NASA plans, there are thousands of employees at work, engineers, researchers, mechanics, astronauts, analysts, and every single person is important. And history tells us that if just one of those people commits an error in their math and misses a stroke on a keyboard, pits a hyphen in case of Mar- in the case of Mariner One, that the whole mission is jeopardized. One little thing, one little hyphen left out, and the whole mission was jeopardized. And all the hours and days and years of hard work can go down the drain in an instant because it takes everyone showing up. It takes everyone checking and rechecking and doing it all over again. And that's just, that's just talking about space exploration. But we carry the message of salvation. What, what greater mission, Brother Riggs, could we ever have than carrying the, the, carrying the responsibility and the, and the honor uh, of carrying this great mission of, of the message of salvation? And there's no room for error. There's no room for error with salvation. We, we, can't, we can't miss it. We're trying to make heaven our home, and there's no room for error on that journey. The greatest mission, but the greater the mission, the greater the responsibility. With us having one of the greatest missions, we also bear one of the greatest responsibilities of making sure that, that, that we get his truth out, that we take his word to the world But before we can go out and and begin to help other build their life, we have to make sure that our life is square, that our life is true, that we are true men and true women of God, that we have done all that we can. Therefore, we have one of the greatest responsibilities. As the musicians come this afternoon, it's no coincidence that of all the things that that Jesus' earthly father could have been, that he would be a carpenter. And that Jesus would be known or called the son of a carpenter. Oh, is this is this that son, that son, son of a car, son of a carpenter? But little did they know that he was actually the master carpenter. That when he came, that that he designed and framed everything they saw. He designed, he spoke it into existence. That he was the ultimate master craftsman. And I'm so thankful that we are not alone. I'm thank good, I, I thank the Lord that we are not alone. And I thank goodness that we have a source that we can go back to and that we can go to him. We can go to his word and say, all right, let's check my math. Check my math on this, Lord. Uh, you know, let me make sure I'm still true. Lord, I pray I want you to search me right now. Search me. Search for errors. See if there's anything that I've done wrong. I, I, I want to make sure that all systems are a go. Lord, the mission is too great. For me to, to, to back out now, Lord, the mission is too great for me right now to, to miss to miss my mark because people are counting on me. That the body is counting on me, God. I need you to, to, to help me and check me right now because he is the architect of our universe. He is our mission's captain. He is our God. He's our, he is a, a pray, just a prayer away. And he's given us a fail-safe manual to make it through life. He's given us a standard. He has given us a way that we can check and recheck. We need that standard measuring device, that standard, something that is constant. And I love it because His Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
what better standard could you have to measure and, and check your life with than something that has been constant since before the world was formed? And that is the Word of God. If you want to stand in your homes this afternoon as you stand, I, I hope that we have a desire to be true men and true women of God, aligned with His Word, making sure that, 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 that our lives line up and that they're square, that we're not, we're not missing something, that there's no error in our life, there's no error in our walk with God. What, what, what right now, why don't we seek Him today? Why don't you lift your hands right now and let's begin to, to talk to God. Let's ask Him to search for any errors. Let's ask Him to, to highlight any flaws in our thinking, to point out any discrepancies in our judgment. Lord, true us up today. Make sure that we haven't got out of line with your word because there's too much on the line. God, I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven even by one degree, Lord. I don't want to miss heaven, Lord. Help us to make sure that everything is aligned. Lord, I, I want to be able to stand before you one day and hear you say, well done. God, the last thing I want to hear is how lack is one thing. I don't want to miss heaven by one degree. I don't want one thing to keep me out of heaven. Right now, I want you to worship as they sing. Sing this with us, Lord. Oh, God. The One more time, and let's, let's close with worship. I today. have made my decision. I have staked my claim. I have drawn a line in the sand. I won't be the same with the world behind me and the cause before by the I pray the blessings and the favor of the Lord upon you. I hope that you would take this word today, that we would take some time in this coming week to, to reevaluate, to check our lives, to recheck, to make sure that all is good, searching for any errors, asking God to highlight any flaws that we might have. Lord, I pray that anything that inside of us, Lord, that doesn't need to be there, that you would reveal those things to us. God, right now I pray over your people, Lord. God, I pray your blessings. I pray your favor, your goodness. pray that you would go with us, that you would keep us safe, that you would protect us. Lord, we, we desire for the body to gather once again in this house. Lord, I pray that you would make a way, God, that you would begin to prepare that, that way. Lord, we ask for wisdom. Lord, we ask for, for your goodness, for your direction and leadership and guidance, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for this week. And we know that you'll bring us back safely to your house once again. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Once again, it's so good to have all of you with us. Thank you for joining us uh, for worship and for the word today. And we will see you Wednesday night at 7 p.m. God bless.